so so this is the question you know it says drive the equations giving the final speeds for two objects that collide elastically with a mass of object being this speeds being this yeah and uh, i'm going to do this really quickly using a shortcut and i'll leave it up to your judgment whether to use this shortcut or not and really it comes down to because there's another shortcut that i've seen people use that um I don't know if there's a, a way for me to prevent that other shortcut. And the shortcut I'm showing you is at least the types of shortcut that even the professionals in the field would use. So, uh, and I guess the other shortcut professionals might use all, as well, which is looking at the textbook. But sometimes the textbook doesn't have the exact equation you are looking for. So, what do you do if? Uh, um, so, you know, what do you do in that case? And the shortcut I'm showing you works more generally. So this is what the question is saying, you know, drive the equations, uh, giving the final speeds for, let me highlight the important part, two objects that collide elastically, which is uh, telling us that kinetic energy is conserved. And really where it says collide, collide is actually also telling you that total momentum conserved. Because uh, usually the things that we describe as collision, moment is conserved, especially for all the objects involved in the collision are involved in your system. If you have a wall or whatever, then okay, the momentum gets transferred to the wall, but here, momentum is conserved. And then it's saying with the mass of objects being M1 and M2, okay, uh, those are the symbols they are telling us to use. So if you note these conservation laws that apply in this setup, from this single phrase, collide elastically. Then you know what equations to use to drive these expressions. You are using conservation law strategy. Uh, we've identified two conserved quantities. So let's write down two equations based on those two things. And um, I think they are um, missing some information and let's just say they are colliding elastically uh, and this is a head on collision. Uh, if it's not a head on collision, then you would have to uh, consider different angles that things can get gone. And that's really why I'm assuming it's a head on collision because um, otherwise I need the data and it didn't tell me what angles I can use. So with a head-on collision, treating this like a one-dimensional situation, my first equation is conservation of kinetic energy. So the total uh, kinetic energy initially is going to be equal to total kinetic energy finally. And I'll parse out exactly what this is. And my second equation is conservation of momentum. The total momentum initially is going to equal total momentum finally. So total kinetic energy initially. So I have objects M1 and M2. Let's just start writing them out. I have a kinetic energy of M1. That's going to be one half M1 and it's a speed uh, V1 initial V0. V0 squared plus the total initial kinetic energy of M2. It said it's at rest. So it's going to be zero. That's equal to the final kinetic energy. So I am going to use these symbols, V1 and V2, for final speeds, uh, which is what they are telling us to use, I think. Um, one half M1 V1 squared plus the final kinetic energy of V2. It probably gained some kinetic energy through the collision. One half M2 V2 squared. So that's my equation one. For my equation two, I am going to give a statement of conservation of momentum. So uh, initial momentum, it's uh, m1 times v0 plus the zero momentum for uh, v2, which wasn't moving, is equal to. And here, um, one could uh, think through what kind of collision it might be. As you think about m1 and m2 colliding, I think it's easy to think of m1 being bounced to the back and maybe write down minus m1 v1. Let me show you a slightly different approach, which I would like to call is a more formal approach. Because actually there are situations where m1 will continue to roll forward. 
So what I'm going to write down is I'm going to simply write down m1 v1 plus m2 v2. And now what I will insist on here is I didn't make any sign error. What I've written these symbols for is I've written them as a vector quantities. So if, uh, you know, defining this as my positive x direction, if my v1 and v2 turn out to be positive, then that's the solution telling me that these are moving in the positive direction. So my, if one or both of these quantities end up being negative, it's the solution tells me, oh, one of them is bouncing backward. So, so I'm just going to um, just not include the signs in, into my equation. And you will see me start to do that with some of the more formalistic equations. Conservation law equations are first of those equations where you will see me doing that. So I have this. And normally, the next 15, 20 minutes will be spent <laughs> going through algebra to solve this all out. Instead of that, I'm going to use the amazing shortcut of computer algebra system. I'm just going to type in these equations and, um, and let the computer algebra system do the solution. Let me make sure all my variables are declared. Okay. And my equation one will be the conservation of energy is equal to one half times m1 times v1 squared plus one half times m2 times v2 squared. Okay, and equation two will be um, conservation of momentum m1 times v0 is equal to m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. Okay, uh, let's make sure I uh, typed those in correctly. And I'm going to have a solve a function, solve for a system of equation. That's the system of equation one and two. And I'm going to have it solve for v1 and v2. It all, that Me telling the system that also tells it that the other variables may be treated as unknown quantities. So, oh, that was quick. Oh, it's solved. So it gives me two solutions, which actually makes sense because I have uh, that squared quantity there. So uh, there should be a, a, syst a two set of solutions. And the first solution, if you read through it and think through it carefully, hopefully gives you the sense that, oh, that's the solution you get when these two balls have simply missed each other. The M1 uh, retained its initial speed and M2 continues to not move. So really the solution I want is the second solution. So let me say my solutions are really the previous output, second element. So this is the solution I'm working with. And oh, I don't have to plug in any numbers because it's asking me for symbolic answer. So I'm just gonna symbolically type in this. Um, so V1 is gonna be M1 minus, oh, I need the subscript, minus M2 times v not divided by m1 plus m2. And I think even though this looks a little ugly, it'll be fine. It won't, uh, it, it'll recognize the correct expression. 2 times m1 times v not divided by m1 plus m2. Interesting. All right, let's see if there are correct answers. Yep, they are correct. Good. <laughs> And again, um, if I'm doing this by hand, it would have taken me another 10, 15 minutes, or maybe 20, I don't know. So it says, consider your answers carefully and match the conditions below with what you physically observe. Ah, m1 equal to m2. Then you see the v1 goes to zero. So you have object one goes to com complete stop. Yeah, that's uh, C. If m1 is greater than m2, uh, interesting. So this is positive. Nothing interesting here. Okay, so object one will continue to roll in the positive direction. That's what I was saying. It could be positive. So continuous, yeah, that's A. And the last one, M1. So this quantity will now be negative. So V1 as a vector quantity is negative, which means the ball M1 is now uh, rolling in the, the negative. So it bounces backward after collision. That's D. So yeah, I'm using the shortcut that um, I, I'm a little bit um, um, uh, uh, 
two-minded, uh, amb ambivalent about this particular situation, people using computer algebra system, which is because um, I do think the algebra exercise you get here is good exercise to have. You'll see me do that in lecture. So, you know, do that for your own learning. At the same time, if you want to use computer algebra system, take the exact shortcut I've taken now. I think that's totally fine. I, I don't think uh, um, other than missing out on a little bit of algebra practice, I don't think you've missed out on anything great and big. So, <laughs> so that's my demo of uh, approach that I feel a little bit ambivalent about. But I feel better about this approach than simply looking up equations from the textbook, which, you know, it's not cheating, but it, you learn less from doing that from than from doing this. Here, you enlist to learn how to use the computer algebra system.